Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Tonight, we're going to talk about why men are happier than women. And it's statistically shown and also by polls and by interviews, men seem to be pretty happy, at least happier than women. And I've got an article here by Paul Elam. He's, uh, he's, uh, he has a website, A Voice for Men. And he is kind of one of the originators of the movie, The Red Pill. If you haven't seen that, that's a really great watch. And it talks about a lot about some of the statistics and things that we cover here. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, most recently, women are kind of having their way. You know, they're, they're saying, hey, we want higher education. We want more uh, scholarships. So women are now graduating at higher education than men. They're doing better with income. Uh, they now have more income going into the stock market and 401ks than men do. They win custody the majority of the time. They can accuse a guy of doing something even if he didn't do anything. And just her saying that he did that alone is enough to get guys in trouble. Seems like, you know, they, they oftentimes they just had the women's march a few days ago. And oftentimes they say, hey, you know, we, uh, we women, are we're just held back. We, we just can't get ahead. And then when you show all the statistics, all the women are ahead. So what is it they're fighting against? And then what happens if they actually win? So let's get recording here, and then we're going to talk about this. And the first article I came across, which uh, is this one, and but this is very old. It's from 2011. And this was one of the, the articles that I was reading up when I was kind of going through this stuff. And it's uh, meet the least happy people in America. And who is this least happy person? The least happy is female, 42, unmarried, household income under 100k and in a professional position doctor lawyer etc now were you to change some of these metrics a little bit would that change but yes that's the unhappiest profile well how many times do we see that it's unmarried that's happening a lot more nowadays um household income under 100k uh, you know 100 grand is uh, quite a bit but then they say the profession of position or professional position doctor lawyer well those aren't the, the positions that are making less than 100 grand a year so there's there's a couple different things where where women are just not too happy um, but here's the main story and this is what i wanted to read and you'd think again all the things that i talk about on here a lot of you guys say oh man i can't watch this stuff it bums me out but the truth of it is, if you hang in there, if you hang in there for the long haul, some of you younger guys out there, things improve dramatically for men. And, you know, I, I never thought I'd be a guy that says, hey, you know, I'll be a network engineer, I'll be successful, or I'll be making X amount of dollars. I never thought that that would be me. But, you know, if if you stick stick to it and, and, and keep, uh, uh, keep pushing, you can make things happen. Well, they say here uh, by Paul Elam, why men are happier than women. Let's have a word, and I let me see if I, nah, I'll just have to deal with all the overlay on this website. Let's have a word about women and men, or rather the happiness gap that is continually widening between them. A simple search engine query on women's declining happiness, which will autofill on Google, uh, will, it tells the story. Suffice it to say that studies outpaint a picture with Norman Rockwell clarity and realism. By every known measure we have, women have grown increasingly miserable. If you look up young people and being unhappy and young people in self-ending, that is still the majority of that is young men, about 75%. But men are succeeding more often where women, it is more a cry for help. Interestingly enough, however, um, the, the women that are uh, dealing with this, while that is not as high as men, the women that are self-medicating, i.e. a little... Uh, 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 ganja a little bit of uh, uh, drinking um, these are become big big problems and then of course the promiscuity that is going along with trying to help themselves cope with uh, you know being a professional and having a professional career it's a lot of weight knowing you have to work for the next 40 or 50 years and you you know you may be alone to do all this it's a lot of weight men are used to this you know there's pictures of guys in trenches uh, during WW1, WW2, and various other conflicts, 
where these guys are sitting there and they're in a in a, a foxhole or they're in a trench and they're smiling and they're joking and they're having fun even though they know right over the ridge could be impending doom. Men are just wired differently and women are trying to act like guys but they don't have the internal wiring and it is not working out well for them. Uh, so the good news is for you guys is hang in there. Things do get better and uh, you know not only statistics show it but but like I said study or uh, interviews are showing it. By many uh, objective measures the lives of women in the United States have improved over the past 35 years yet we show measures of subjective well-being indicate that women's happiness has declined both absolutely and relative to men. So they're less happier, they're less happier than not uh, than we are, but they're also less happy overall when not even being compared to men. The paradox of women's declining relative well-being is fo found across various data sets, measures of subjective well-being, and is pervasive across demographic groups and industrialized countries. Relative declines in female happiness have eroded a gender gap in happiness in which women in the 1970s typically reported higher subjective well-being than did men. These declines have continued and a new gender gap is emerging, one with higher subjective well-being for men. Again, it sounds crazy, but you know, I, I've said it many times, this, the girl power movement and yay women has been the best thing that could happen for men. You know, if you go back to the 1960s, 50s, 70s, if you were a lifelong bachelor, they'd consider you to either be A, a playboy, which a lot of us still are, or B, uh, that you've got a problem, that maybe you're not socially acclimated, that you don't play well with others, uh, that there's something wrong with you because you don't want women and women, maybe they'd think, you know, that, that you weren't straight. Uh, it, it's hard to say what uh, what they would have thought. I have I, never been around in the 50s, but you understand what I'm saying. Big thing is, though, that now because of the girl power movement i don't have to supply i don't have to provide for a family i can stay a bachelor i can travel i can have any job that i want to it i don't have to be a quote good provider if i want relatively easy access to um intimacy with women i can either date and a lot of times it'll happen on the first or second date thanks uh, girls that like to uh, put it out without a relationship or if you go on to some of these websites you can easily hire a professional and you know, three to four hundred bucks may sound like a lot to you younger guys, but as you age, if it's it's a you know if it's a, a something you want to treat yourself to every couple of months, you can do it. I mean, but trying to do something like that again in the '70s, you would have been probably down on a street corner with somebody that was pretty pretty sketchy. Let's consider some things have happened over the past half century that one could reasonably expect to enhance women's happiness. During that time, women have achieved nearly everything that a woman's movement purported to help women attain. Women now greatly outnumber men in higher education. 60% to 40% is what I've, I've read in statistics here on other videos. Um, consequently, their presence in the workplace in most fields has increased dramatically, along with their opportunities for the same. Women have gained almost complete mastery of their reproductive lives with an abundance of birth control options. The availability and legality of um, baby termination um, when wanted and the ability to chase men to the ends of the earth for child support, even when the men shelling out the money isn't the father. And I've done those uh, in some of my videos. All this has transpired in a political climate that makes women's issues and women themselves sacrosanct sacrosanct above question for anyone who knows what's good for them women are now the very heart of consumer culture as of 2012 and this is a 2019 article so it's not very old as of 2012 women hold 60 percent of all personal wealth and 51 percent of stocks those numbers have almost certainly grown since then they say uh yet women are getting miserable or more miserable as uh and yet women are miserable and getting more so as time goes by don't argue with me about it i've provided you the research that confirms it and he's got some links on here if you guys want to follow them they're kind of what i've covered on many of my videos during the same period of time that women have sunk into an apparently inexplicable inexplicable abyss of personal suffering men have become happier relative to women for some reason while men have been dropping like flies for, uh, from from higher education and the workplace, while they've been increasingly demonized and ostracized by academia, uh, political sphere, and indeed by women as a group, they've gotten happier. Even as we claim victory for women in breaking through alleged workplace and educational barriers, the statistic of 93% of workplace 
endings, being male, hasn't changed a fraction. Men are still the primary occupants of life-ending professions and dangerous work. They're still the ones in the coal mines, crab boats, and combat. A triple alter... A triple alteration is free as a cur as a courtesy to you, dear reader. Sorry, he writes he writes in a way I'm not quite used to. So a little different than the normal news stories that I read. So yeah, guys, do the most dangerous work. Ninety three percent of life ending events at work are men, and I know the numbers are for for injuries at work. It is still in the ninety percent of of uh, men. For of course, ending getting ended in a military conflict, men. Uh, same thing when it comes to law enforcement and firefighting and all the other dangerous professions we have. It's it's unerringly men. But knowing this, men still sign up for these jobs. Men still do these jobs. Men still take the, the money for it. And men are happy. Men are okay doing this. There's no way you could get a woman to do this type of profession. I just, I just don't see it happening. They don't want to even get into, like I talked about in my other video, they don't even want to get into um, roofing or tarring a road, or collecting garbage, or some of these other things that are relatively safe. They're just kind of physically miserable because you're in the sun and you're hot. Nope, they just want no part of it. So again, you'd think the women working in the air-conditioned offices versus the guys out here that are doing risky, dangerous stuff and working out in the heat, no, not at all, because you adapt to it. And the other thing is, I've you know uh, I've had guys uh, that I hired to put up a fence over at my old home. When they came out there, man, you were out. They were out there joking and laughing and having a good old time, working in a hundred degree, very humid weather in North Carolina, digging uh, fence post holes manually, dropping fences, manu uh, uh, measuring the lines to make sure everything was square. It was hot. It was miserable. They're having a good time. They got used to it. The, uh, the most they asked me for is a cold glass of water. Um, they say here, I sub, um, uh, well, let me jump back here. Men are still ending more often, uh, of the top 10 causes. They are still the ones who are overwhelmingly lose custody, dis uh, disputes in family court. And when it comes to self deletion, they still end themselves at four times the rate of women, like I was mentioning before. But it says self ending aside, though men who don't end themselves tend to be a lot happier than women. That is why I say hang in there, gentlemen. If you're having a struggle, it will pass. We've all been there. He continues on, I suppose this would make a lot of people scratch their heads wondering how this could possibly be. How could women whose lives have improved by nearly every measure society employs see their general sense of happiness diminish? I think it's because they're, they're going against their own natural, uh, their own nat natural history of, of, of what they're, they're wired to do. You know, men are used to providing. It's kind of, why do you see men jump in to handle something that's that's dangerous you know when when uh, uh, the, uh something breaks out like a fight or something out guys usually are the ones jumping in everybody back up ease off or uh, a car goes into a river um in, somewhere over uh, overseas i i uh, down south i think it was in peru or mexico or something a car went off road into very deep water and men just ran off the side of the road were diving in into this car not only saved the life of the person but the kid as well as the dog and, and this was rushing water. Like it was not, you know, it was not undangerous for the men. It's, it's in us. It, it's, it's wired in us. So again, as women try to, to emulate and pray, hey, we can be like men now. Let's be like men. They're not happy doing it. Uh, indeed, as you can see in this chart above from this uh, Stevenson Wolfer study in 1975, women reported more happiness and well-being than men in 1975. That comparative did a f complete flip in the 30 years that elapsed since. And again, you can see it here um, that they're pointing out back at the very beginning of the graph uh, that the lines are um, are women dashed lines versus men and you can look at this like i said i'll leave the links down below um I, th this is i'm about halfway through i'm gonna i'm gonna stop the reading here i'm gonna leave the link if you guys want to uh, finish through this but here's the big thing that they're talking about look um women wanted the high paying jobs that you know they say hey i don't want this glass ceiling i want to be a ceo i want to be a doctor i want to be a lawyer i want all these things that men have and they fought for it and they got it the thing is, I, I don't think women often realize that they say, oh, well, Jeff Bezos is worth all these billions of dollars, and what did he ever... Man, I guarantee you, he works his tail off. Look at Elon Musk. Elon Musk says, hey, I'm going to... I'm gonna, You know, he was young. I, I think 
I forget what he originally created. You guys are going to have to look at me up. I once knew, and I don't want to take a guess at it because I'll probably be wrong, but uh, he, he came into money. He, then he does PayPal, and then that gets purchased, and then he does you know, Tesla, and he does uh, 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 SpaceX, and he does all these other projects. The guy's always working. Well, yes, you can be very rich and successful if you're intelligent enough and you're creative enough, and you have to work your tail off. And I think a lot of times that not even, even not every man wants to do that. It takes a very specific person. Now, uh, I should know her name off the top of my head. Uh, is it Sue, I think, or Susan, the CEO of, um, um, oh gosh, I'm running all over the place tonight, AMD. If you look at AMD, she's doing a great job with the company. Someone like that, I guarantee you, is working mad hours. So these women say, hey, I want all this. And guys say, okay, come on, come on aboard. And then when they're doing that, they say, oh my gosh, remember, women are social, men are more logical. All of a sudden they say, I have no social life. I have no freedom. How am I going to ever meet somebody? How am I going to date? How am I going to have a family? How am I going to spend time with my kids? How am I going to have a social circle? It's just work all the time. And a lot of guys are, it's work. I make a couple of buddies at work. We talk, we hang out, we have fun while we're at work, or I have someone I can chat with a little bit. And then when I come home, I do my own thing And could, because men don't need to be social. So um, then on top of that, uh, I think I'll end it with this. Let's play a little bit of the what if, what then game, uh, as I sometimes do. Okay, women are now higher education. 60% they graduate higher education to men's 40%. You've won that, yet you still complain. Well, what if it's 80-20, 90-10? What if you have 100% women are the only ones getting upper upper um, educations? Is that going to make you any happier? It hasn't so far. Then what? Then what's going to make you happy? You say, hey, I want to be uh, in charge of the relationship. I want things to go my way. Okay, so you'll get a meek, weak guy that will say, no problem, whatever you want, honey. And what does she say? I'm not happy. I want the big, strong, alpha you know, dude that, that is masculine and aggressive because I find that attractive, but he doesn't want to settle with me or, or marry me because I want, to, you can't have it both ways. So they're not happy there. Well, then what? You get your weak little meek guy, then what? You get the kids, you want to spend time with them, but now you have to spend too much time at work. Then what? You know, they're, again, it's, it's, you're getting everything, women are getting everything that they ever could have wished for, and it's still not good enough. And so sometimes, guys, when I talk about these topics and you go, oh, man, guys have it so bad and everything's against us. Hey, you know what? Men may have things against them right now in society. Maybe they don't. You know, depending on who you talk to, depending on what statistics they want to listen to, they may disagree with you. But you know something? It won't. Those, these statistics of bad things that happen to men and uh, the higher education and divorces. Well, guess what? If you stay single, divorce rate doesn't matter. If you don't have kids... Child custody doesn't matter. If you live your own life and only have to worry about what you want to spend on what, th then you don't need a big income. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you find your path through life and you find what makes you happy. Now you don't have to be responsible for anyone anymore. It's a good time to be guys. You know, the, the top 20% are guys. They're going out there and ha they're having a good old time in the dating world. And the other 80% of men said, well, this isn't fair. I don't, because I don't have a shot now. Okay. It is what it is. Now you can be mad about it and you can be upset about it and be angry at the world and blame everything and finger point and this is all your problem. Or you can say, hey, you know what? It is what it is. I can't change it. But what I can change is my own thought process about this. I can change how I look at the world. I can change how I deal with this. And, and then once you've done that, you can say, okay, I, I want to deal with this by traveling, by getting a dream job, by reaching and trying to make a hundred grand, by gaining five pounds of muscle and losing 10 pounds of fat, by getting a dog, by being able to run a marathon, by all these other metrics or things that, that deem important to you, being able to have t 10 Bitcoin in your own name, whatever it is. So once you, once you get to the point where you've made that realization, men are happy. So really women are trying to be like the guys of the 1970s and they're succeeding. And the guys of the 1970s weren't happy. But the housewives were. The women that stayed home and raised the kids and, and were working part-time and are just kind of like, ah, you know, he makes all the money. All I have to do is take care of the house and life is easy and I'll be a mom and he comes home and I cook dinner and life is good. 
Well, now what's happening? The guys are working, easier jobs. They come home, they make whatever food they want for themselves. Tonight, I feel like, I don't know, uh, White Castle frozen burgers that I throw in the microwave. Or I throw something in the crock pot, like my own homemade spaghetti sauce and let it cook in the crock pot all day long. Then I come home and make my own spaghetti dinner just the way I like it. Perfect every time. I don't have to please anybody else with the flavor. I can add a little hot sauce to it, whatever. Men are finding out, hey, light, it's about me now. It's, a, it's my life. I can do whatever the heck I want, however I want, whenever I want. Do I want to give that up for not only maybe 15 minutes or 30 minutes of intimacy every couple of days, but then I have to provide, I have to do, I have to do all these things to keep my wife happy and my kids happy and all this other stuff? Or do I say, I just do whatever I want? And I'll leave that one little fun, very, very fun piece of, of life off on the table and I get to enjoy everything else. And I think guys are, are now getting that and women are realizing, oh my gosh, I'm stuck at work. I don't have a provider. I'm going to be here until the day I retire. And that's why they're not happy. They got what they wished for. Uh, guys, uh, if you want to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. The best way to support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. You can always join me over at... Uh, uh, betterbachelor.locals.com I've got the forums over there we have discussions over there I upload my videos over there as well if you want to join me over there so guys I'll leave it there this is Better Bachelor I'm joking remember they got what they wished for let them have it don't don't fret about it don't get angry about it don't get frustrated about it you do you do what makes you happy and in the long run they're going to be miserable with the choices that they're fighting for and in the end you're going to be happy and with the and then what game the and then what is the men were happy and the women are less happy even though they're working all the jobs and getting all the titles and careers they wanted. They got what they wished for. Mm -hmm.